Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I wanna to show you guys how to take the videos that you're already making and putting all that hard work into and distributing them across multiple platforms that will naturally result into reaching a wider audience, growing your accounts, and hopefully generating a bit of a moolah. As we know, every platform has their different sizes. We've got nine by 16 for your TikToks and shorts and Instagram reels and Facebook reels. And then you got your one by one for Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. And then you got your normal 16 by nine size that you'd probably use for more long form content. Riverside, they're sponsoring this video today. I've really cracked the code when it comes to recording remote interviews and podcasts. It records locally. That means that you're always gonna get the highest possible quality audio and video non-compressed. Usually we're kind of used to this compressed look that doesn't look or sound great to be honest, but they've really cracked it. And you only have to log on to your browser, no extra plugins or programs needed. Also to make it super easy for you to repurpose that content for any kind of social media platform. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And then also I'm gonna show you guys a few ideas of how to do it in Premiere Pro, but to be honest, it's just ideas. You can use any kind of editor. Also to add that this is something that everybody's after at the moment. I've seen so many requests for people needing short form content editors. And after I show you guys how to do it today, you'll see that turnaround can be quick. Revisions are pretty limited and the results are instant because the platforms, at least for now, are favoring this kind of content. So first let's chop our content into little pieces using Riverside. I'm going to open up Chrome because they recommend you using Chrome for the best possible results. I'm going to go into Riverside log in and right here you've got your studios you can have as many studios as you want i've got one for podcasting me and joss did one right here i've got the recording i'm going to click into it and then i'm going to start editing it asks you what size you want so you got your 9 by 16 1 by 1 16 by 9 let's go with 9 by 16 and right at the bottom right here you can choose the length you can choose the part of the clip you want to chop up. On the right, you've got some more controls. You got your tracks. You can take video and audio out if you needed to. You can go and change the size if you needed to. You got different layouts and different backgrounds. And then you can also add a logo. So this is a really quick way of doing it in Riverside, in the browser, no extra stuff needed. It processes everything on the website and then you download it good to go here we've got some examples of the exported videos you'll get from riverside make sure to follow the link in the description to check out riverside for free if you want to have a few more options i'd use something like premiere pro you can use any editor as i said in the beginning and also you've got the ability of adding transcription and text to your videos i'm still going to use the files here and i'm going to go down and download the mp4s and wave files for myself and Josh. And then I'm gonna drop that into Premiere Pro. Right here, I've got the individual file of myself and for Josh. Let's come and create a sequence for Instagram Reels. I'm gonna come in, use my frame size, 1080 by 1920. And then let's go for 29 frames, press OK. That's good, keep existing settings. So with Riverside, everything should be lined up already. And then as you can see, I've got Josh and myself here and let's go and resize some stuff. And in both clips, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the transform tool, select those and then double click on the transform tool. And then I'm going to come in and use the crop tool as well. So double click on that, that should get applied on both clips. And if you go down to your crop tool and just choose top or bottom, I'll go 50%. And then if you have your transform tool right above your crop tool, you should be able to resize that. And bam, I'll resize the top one. So I've got myself in the top and then Josh in the bottom. Let's chop the clip right here. So this is what I want to chop up. For social media, you need things to be snappy, straight to the point. And the good thing with Premiere Pro is you can go in and make all those changes and make those snappy cuts. I would use my shortcuts QW and then I've set E as my add edit shortcut. You'll find a bunch of those tips in the 10 things you're doing wrong in Premiere Pro series we made. And yeah, hopefully there's some stuff in there that will save you time. So I'd go through this using Q to delete everything before the playhead up to the cut and using W to delete everything after the playhead up to the cut. So doing that, you can go through it and straight away really, you can go in and delete awkward silences, just going from the audio. And then after you're done, you end up with a timeline that looks a bit like this. After you've done that, your next step would be going up to window, text, and then transcribe the sequence. In my experience, this is 95% accurate. It's really, really good. First thing I'll do is I'll replace some commas with an empty space because I find that it puts it in random places. And then after you're kind of happy with that, you can go through it, see if you're happy. You can create the captions. These are the settings I use for social media. Most of the time, single, 
no gap in between the frames. And then I'll go in, extend some of those gaps, probably go through the text as well and make sure the text is as tight as it can be. Select everything, go up to style. I'm gonna use the channel font and then make that all caps and put that in the middle. So everything's in the middle. Another scenario you might bump into is if someone sends you a landscape video. A few things you can do is when it is a talking head, you can go in to your effects and use auto reframe. And what that's gonna do is it's almost gonna track your main subject so that is the main focus at all times. So as you can see from right here, the angle does change and it tries to keep me in the center. You do have a few settings in there. You can have slow motion, the default or faster motion, and then you can go in and even overwrite the generated keyframes. So a lot of things there that you can use, but sometimes the framing is too up close, so you kinda don't want that. Again, I would apply auto reframe and then come down to reframe scale and scale that down a bit, maybe offset that so it's more in the middle. But then what I'll do is I'll duplicate that clip using option and dragging up. And in the bottom clip, I would turn auto reframe off and then scale that up and then go into your effects and look for Gaussian blur. Pop that on, up the blurriness a bit. And then on the top clip, just to make it pop a tiny bit more, I'll use drop shadow. Put the opacity to 100%, maybe distance to about 20, and then softness to about 100%. Go into your export settings. I use the export H.265. Make sure you match the source. So the size is 1080 by 1920, that portrait size. Make sure you go into your captions option and select burn captions into video. So I'll make sure the captions are burnt onto the video. Export that and you're good to go. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that was helpful. If you got any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. And also I need some recipe suggestions, something I can whip up quick while my videos are rendering. Let me know in the comments. Check out the Riverside link in the description to start for free. And if you want to come and say hi, Dave the Greco is my ID handle. Till next time. Take care guys. Peace.